you're dead to it. If you've been made dead to it, there was a time when you were alive to it, and he's reckoning your mind to think back on the time. How can this be? How can it be? Well, obviously, um, this, um, in the day we live in, this is very relevant. Because, see, the, the, actually, they're saying the opposite. They're saying, how can we be dead to sin? That's what they're saying. He says, how can we that are dead to sin? Because, see, we all started out in Christ Jesus being dead to sin. So, see, there was a measurable degree. You could measure it. You could say, there was a time when I was alive, but now I'm dead to sin. So that's how we all started out in Christ Jesus. We started out with a, we're dead to sin. Now, he's reasoning with, the, with the, the new man. The new man's being reasoned with now. It's not logical to go back and start serving sin again. The premise, like I've already said, it, the pre, there's a premise in there. It's that you're dead, indeed, to sin. Being dead to sin is not a theory, and it's, just, it's, not like, it's not like my opinion. I think I am. No, no, it's much more than that. You are dead to sin, which means you... You don't react to it anymore. You don't respond to it anymore. You're dead to sin. You're alive to God. The contrast that he's developing. Death has no more dominion over you. Which means you've been removed from the dominion of sin. Now you're in the dominion of another master. Sin's not your master anymore. Christ is your master. Righteousness is your master. It, this, is, this is actually quite a... A, a, a re, you can really rejoice in this when you, you start getting your spiritual teeth in it and thinking about this with the Lord. We've been delivered from the bondage of sin and death to serve another. Amen. We've been delivered. We had to be delivered. Death really did have its grip on us. It really did. Everyone who's in Christ Jesus has stopped responding to sin to some measurable degree. I say that because this is... See, it has to be this way. If we all started out righteous in Christ Jesus, then you could measure that. The question produces its own answer for those who are seriously interested in maintaining spiritual life. If you think about this with Christ, in other words, you'll come to the right conclusion that it's unreasonable. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? They're not merely alive in theory. Not merely, see, but this life is a reality and it has produced real fellowship with God and that's how they know they're alive to God. It's not just like, well, we think we might be alive to God. It says that we should be. Well, then we think that maybe we are. See, this is not it at all. Spiritual life in Christ results in a fellowship with God that it can't be mimicked. It can't be produced by the law. It can't be manufactured by, by you shoulds and you ought tos. It's a very real fellowship with life. You're alive unto God. Fellowship, this fellowship cannot be realized or produced in those who are alive unto sin. See, now this is, this is the transaction that Satan doesn't tell you. He doesn't tell you about this part of it. In order to sin, you have to give up the fellowship with God. It has to go. God can't fellowship with sin. And, and by the way, there's no, there's no sin in Christ Jesus. Now, when you add this to the equation, how can I be in Christ Jesus and sin? Well, this is impossible. It's just as impossible as being dead to sin and being alive unto to sin, to God. Okay. Joseph, I was thinking about this. Joseph could answer this question. Joseph would have no problem answering this question in the day we live in. He would look at this question. He would say it's not reasonable. This is not reasonable. He was, he, you know, he had a very similar circumstance. Here he was. He was put over a house, Potiphar's house. Potiphar actually purchased him. He was Potiphar's slave. He, Potiphar owned him, put him in charge of his whole house. Why? Because he saw that this man had favor with God. He saw that in, in, in Joseph. So he put him over his house. He saw that everything this man did, God profited his hands, the work of his hands. He put him over his house. He was over everything. And there come a time when Potiphar's wife, we, we all recall the story, wanted something that Joseph couldn't give. And he, he reasoned this out. This is not reasonable. It's not reasonable for me 
It's a record in Genesis 39. And Joseph, Joseph found grace, verse 4, in the sight of, in his sight, in Potiphar's sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. But there was an exception to that. It was all except. Now, this exception, we know that Joseph made, he knew this exception. Joseph knew it. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hands, and he knew not all that he had. Now, this is very special. There's not a lot of people that this can be said about, that Potiphar, he, he didn't even worry about it. He put it in Joseph's hands, yeah. and he, he left him to make these decisions. Saved the bread which he did eat, and Joseph was a goodly person and well-favored. Joseph had been put in, in, you might say he was put in charge. He was the oversight of everything that this man had. He trusted him. Now, there's a sense in which God has trusted you. There's a sense in which he, he's put you in the kingdom. He's, he's taken away your sin, clean, given you a clean state. You're, you're not serving the sin anymore. It has no more dominion over you. Now you can serve him. But has he told you every minute of every day, of every, this is what you're going to do? Every, no, see, he's entrusted it to you, and now you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. See, God's just, he's entrusted it to you. Now you can, you can kind of like learn what it is to serve righteousness. This, you can't, just, can't, just can't be trained any other way. God's training us for another world, and this is how he's doing it. We, too, there's a sense in which we have a charge over our own body. We don't have a charge over our neighbor's body. You have a charge over your own body. So you, in that body, you have certain lusts, certain desires. See, you've actually been put in, in a body that has an old nature and a new nature in the same body. And it, they're, they're like at war with each other. And so, but see, you're the commander. The new man's been put in charge, and he's the commander. And he can say, no, that's not, not going to glorify God as much as this will. You see how we've been put in charge. That's how Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his house. He saw that God blessed the work of his hands, and so he let him make the decisions. Well, it's a very wise man. It came to pass after these sayings that his master's wife cast her eye upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Now, sin is, is like this. Sin's like an enemy, and it has its desire. It desires. To, why? Why? Because, see, we have an enemy. We're not alone here. We have an enemy, and this enemy knows how much God hates sin. And so he knows if he can get you to sin, then see this, you'll, what happened? What happened? Just with the accusation of, of Joseph sinning, even though J Joseph was cleared, he hadn't sinned, and yet... You can see that the accusation, sin has a desire, it has a purpose, see? It, it's not just random. Sin actually wants to bring you out of favor with God, just like Joseph was brought out of favor with Potiphar. What happened when Joseph was, made, was brought out of favor? His master became angry, and he was put into the prison house. That's what happened. And he hadn't even done anything, but it was the accusation. See, now, now, now sin, we know that we, we stand before a holy and a righteous God. That, see, this God knows. We don't have to guess, well, am I, you know, am I going to be brought up under these charges? Although sometimes these kind of things do happen. But we'll remember that um, sin is our enemy. Remember he asked Cain, God asked Cain, he said, if thou doest well... Shalt thou not be accepted? This is very comforting. 